Okay, good, good. So um, today we will continue to discuss about the mathematics uh, review and uh, those mathematical tools operations will be very useful for, for all of you to, uh, to, to study the finite element in the following uh, classes in, uh, throughout the semester. Okay, so firstly, some logistics I want to uh, share with you. Um, for the homework number one and number zero and number one, we actually already posted them on the canvas. Num problem uh, homework zero mainly is on the mathematics, so we don't need to post a solution. The problem is quite simple. Many of the solutions actually is in the class slides. You can practice that. For the homework number one, it's uh, on the direct method. I post the solution because I want you to know what's the style of the, the homework and the, also in the exams, we will have a little bit simpler problems uh, to, uh, for you to, to use during the exam. So then using those solutions, you will get, the, get some sense on how to, uh, how to solve the problem, how to answer those problems, okay? So the, uh, for, the, for these two homeworks, you don't need to submit. You can, you can firstly work by yourself and then use the, use the solution, homework number one solution to help you to understand the, the, the problems better and then find whether any, any knowledge you actually are lack of, any knowledge you actually need to, uh, to uh, review the materials, okay? From homework number two on, we will, post, uh, we will not post a solution until you submit the, the homeworks, okay? So you can work either in the team or work individually from homework number two on. Those problems actually are very carefully designed. When you work on those problem, uh, problem sets, you will actually learn a lot. You will, you will uh, use that to uh, go through all the key concepts covered in the class. All the key concepts you need to understand in, the, in this subject, okay? So make sure you use those homeworks uh, well. I also post a quiz example. So quiz, we will, use them to test only the key concepts. So you, they will not be complicated. They are very simple, but they just to the point. And then you can uh, usually quiz, we would, every quiz we take uh, 10 to 15 minutes, and then you can, you can solve that and submit it on the canvas. So here I put one example in the canvas. You can take a look, see what's the style of the quiz, okay? So that will help you, uh, help you to do very well in the quiz in the, in the future classes. And every quiz, I will give you the heads up one week before. I will let you know. We will put the, the uh, time, uh, the date of the quiz in the logistic updates uh, at the beginning of the class. So then you will not miss it, okay? Okay, very good. So um, also the tutorial, I have put three videos in the, in the canvas now. So you don't need to watch now, but you can keep a copy of them in the class, in the uh, next few class, we will uh, reserve the class time for you to watch those video and then learn the APCAS from Dr. Uh, Ting Dong's uh, explanation, okay? I also posted the PowerPoint slides there, so you can use that. And uh, I mentioned before, as I mentioned before, on September 26, we will have a guest speaker. So we will go in person in the classroom and now uh, learn the cutting edge research uh, presented by Dr. Fen, and uh, uh, our classroom is in the CSE, so it's in the syllabus. I will, I will send an announcement uh, soon, and then uh, we, we will get it together there, okay? So that's all the logistics I hope to keep all of, all of us on the same page. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, excellent. Very good, very good. Thank you, Tang, Shen, Israel. Very good, very good, okay. So then let's get started uh, for today's class. Yeah, here is the class survey. Uh, many of you give me, very, give me the survey right after past class. Very good. So the, the, the suggestions and comments uh, you, you uh, provided are invaluable, very, very invaluable. So then we, we will adopt them into the class and then you can continue continuously to send, uh, continuously send me your survey, and then we do the, we have the feedback loop, okay? So we con constantly improve your learning experience so that you can, you can very, op very much optimize your time, your energy, but uh, learn the best thing from the final element subject, 
Okay. Okay. So here is the the class uh, uh, content flow. Right now we are here. We are uh, talking about the the mathematic uh, mathematic uh, um, pr uh, reviews here. Okay. And the, uh, here, yes, today is here, and this is the, the outline of uh, this month's schedule. Okay, let's get started for the, uh, the material beginning from the determinant. So in last lecture, we briefly talked about what is determinant. So determinant actually is a property, is a property of any square matrix. Matrix, uh, the row and the column, they can be uh, of the, Different, different size. That's fine. That could, could uh, that can happen, but when they become Battery square die. matrix, means the number of rows yeah. and the numbers of yeah. columns are equal to each other, then that 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 they that is, that matrix can actually be uh, be um, also represented by its determinant. So determinant is a scalar. So the way to uh, the the way to calculate the determinant is as following. For the, for the two by two matrix, the way to calculate it is that you, we multiply the scalar components around the diagonals minus the products of components of diagonals, okay? A11 times A22 minus A12 times A21. So these will give the determinant of 2D matrix, okay? And then, and then for the 3D matrix, we actually select a row or column first. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, excellent. Select a row or column first. And then around the, around the either row or column, we pick the component one by one. Once we pick one component, then that row and that column, we can ignore at that moment. And then the remaining, two by two uh, components will be used to calculate their sub determinant using the equation shown um, uh, above, okay? So, and then when we pick up those, we actually need to add one minus one alternatively. That follows the, the format that minus one with the, all, with the power one plus N, okay? One plus N. Here, one means in the raw one. N is the column number. So then as this number become older and even, my, it becomes minus one or one in the alternative way, right? So in this way, this is actually a formula, algebra formula to show uh, how to calculate the determinant of a three by, three by three matrix, okay? So using this, eventually we can get a determinant as a scalar, like in this way, okay? This is a very straightforward. Now, if we have a four by four matrix, four by four matrix or five by five matrix, we can do the same thing. So we just do it in from the top to down. Three, uh, five by five, we choose a column or choose a row and then pick up the components there. And then it will reduce uh, to four by four matrix. And then we, we choose a row again, get reduce that to three by three and then reduce again to two, two by two, okay? And then go to the scalars. So this, this is in a very structured way all kind of square matrix at any dimension, any size can be calculated using this manner, okay? Now, in last lecture, we also discussed about the, the dot product of two vectors, right? Another very important product in the vector is called a vector product, vector product of the vectors. So in this way, actually, we will have two vectors like A and B, we use the right-hand principle to, uh, to find out what's the result direction. What's the, what's the direction of the resulting vector after A and B have the vector product, okay? It's also called cross product, okay? So the, the direction should be around the sum, okay? A cross product B or A vector product B. So, uh, around the sum using the right hand side, right hand principle. And then the way to calculate, yeah, so here this uh, uh, animation shows that A is uh, blue, B is uh, red. And if you time them together equal to C and then A cross, uh, uh, A times B, A cross product B, it will go upwards, okay? 
the purple is the is the A times B. Now this is the uh, geometrical representation. If you use algebraical representation, this actually equals to you can write it into a matrix and then calculate it similar to the in the way you calculate the determinant. Now we put the the unit vector i j k on the first row. So remember those all those unit vector actually they have a, they have a direction around the x y and the z. They have mag magnitude one 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 right, and then. We put the A and the B, they are own scalar components in the row two and the row three, respectively. Then we pick up the only the row one. We take out the take out the I, put it outside. See, this is in a bold shape. Bold shape, as we discussed earlier, is the it indicates it's the vector, not scalar, right? Bold. Now, when we take out the I, then this row, this column is not in the consideration now. Then we only have these two. Then we take the determinant of these two. Then it equals to A2, B3, minus B2, A3. So that's a scalar in front of the I vector. We do the same thing for the J and the K. For the J, we take out the J and then put a minus sign in front of it, right? And then take a, and then calculate the, the uh, determinant is A1 times B3 minus B1 times A3. But we have a minus one in front of the J. So that's why here is A3, my A3 B1 minus A1 B3. Okay, so same thing for the K, K is a plus one. We put a key here and then do the determinant of this is some small sub matrix. Okay, that, that's how we get this. And here you, you see they have three vectors. That means the final results is actually a vector. It's a vector, okay? And this vector can also be written in terms of in, in the branches. In the parentheses, as we discussed the, the notation in the past class, right? So you have a three of them. And this indicator, each one is the scalar component of one direction. Mm, but the, the overall, they represent a vector in the 3D space. Okay. And the, uh, in terms of the algebra, in terms of, uh, in terms, in terms of the, the final results, actually A cross product B equals to the A magnitude times B magnitude times the sine theta. Theta is the angle between A and B vector. And there's N. N means the direction of this sump, direction of this sump, unit direction in the sump, okay? And, and you can see it's sine theta, right? So that means if the theta equal to zero, means the, the value equal to zero. So equal to sine equal to zero means A and B overlapped with each other. They overlapped or they're opposite. If you look at this the animation, you see, when these two, two, when this is red and blue, they are overlapped. See this point, the purple shrink to a point, right? When they are opposite, they also shrink to a point. And when this, the maximum value is when theta equal to 90 degree, when sine theta, sine 90 degree equal to one, then it A cross product B equals to the product of the magnitude of these two, magnitude of these two. And then with the direction N, perpendicular to both A and B, right? So he see here, now it's actually the maximum. This is the maximum when theta equal 90 degree, okay? And, uh, and also if A and B, you switch the direction. If you times B times A, if you do that way, see, then you put the right hand here. You have the B here and A here, you switch your hand. Then the, the, your sum will go downwards, go downwards. That means, uh, B times A equals to minus A times B because their magnitude, the magnitude of the product is the same, but direction is opposite, right? So that all these uh, things uh, are quite straightforward and uh, they are demonstrated in this uh, animation, okay? Can you guys hear me? Can you see the demonstration? Yeah, yeah, okay, very good, very good. Mm. Good, good. Now, we talk about the vectors and the matrix. Now, these two, can actually multiply with each other. They can multiply with each other as long as they satisfy some principles. For example, matrix can time with the vector, but their dimension has to match, especially the second dimension of matrix and the first dimension of the vector has to match with each other. In this case, you see this matrix three by three, right? Second dimension is three. Vector is three by one. 
first dimension is three. So three, three matches with three. Then this uh, matrix and the vector, they can multiply with each other, okay? The way, the final results actually is, uh, is uh, another, another tensor that, that, uh, that has uh, first dimension equal to the first dimension of matrix, second dimension equals to the second dimension of the vector, okay? So in, in this case, you will have a three by one final uh, dimension for the final product, which is this guy. So the way to calculate this is uh, you times, you times, you dot product, first row of the matrix with the vector, and then put the final scalar results into the first, uh, first row of the product, product tensor, product tensor, okay? And then second row of the matrix times the vector, and then the results get to the dot product results get to the second position, second position of the product uh, tensor. Okay, we call it a tensor because tensor can be zero, one, three, two, three different orders. Matrix usually we call two, uh, two dimension. Vector is one dimension, but uh, but the tensor can be multiple dimensions. Okay, it's a ge more generic term. And then the same thing, the third row times the vector get to the, the third position. So finally you have a three by one vector, new vector, that's a product, okay? And then you can also write it in the algebra way, right? C1 means the CI, I is a different uh, position, different components here. CI equal to uh, sum of M I J times A J. I is the raw, raw number. J is the, the column number. And A J J is the, the different position in the in the vector. So then you, it equals to, to here. And in this this is, uh, notation, this is called the Einstein uh, uh, denotation. Um, you usually used in the continuum mechanics. In this way, when whenever you see the index repeat twice, never three times, only twice, the I, J and J equal means then this will give the sum, give the sum, okay? And then they will not, uh, they will not appear in the left hand, left hand side. It will not go to the results because the I and J will give the sum and this sum will go across all the different components here from one, two, two, three, and to the N, okay? So in this case, actually for CI, we can, I can take any value. T I, if we take one, then it equals to M one, one is fixed here, but J, this is, a, Two two um dummy index is called dummy index. They repeated it. so j equals to one two three. So then eventually we have a m one one times a one plus m one two a two plus m one three a three, and then sum them together, get it to the c one. Okay, and then you can change the i to two or three, but the, the j always repeat for from one, two to three, okay? This is the, the very useful, very, very beautiful formula. And then for the, yeah, you can also write in the, in the, in the uh, matrix uh, notation. So you have a C final result C, which is M by one dimension. And then M, M, you, we, remember we talked about the, the tradition for the matrix. It is matrix, 2D matrix usually is in the capital format, right? Capital M, and then in the bold, in the, in the bracket, right? So this is the, the matrix, traditional matrix. It has N times K dimension. And then for the vector, also it's a bold in the parentheses. It's a K times one because it's a vector. So only one color. And then we time them together. K and K cancel with each other. Only one N and one left. So eventually we get a C N times one because it has a one color. That means it's a vector. So C is a small in a small, format, not a capital, small one, right? And both, this is a matrix, uh, this is a vector. And then different components in the different scalar components in the vector can be written in this way, in this way, okay? It's same as this, but if you have K, if you have many, many of them, then uh, you, you from, from one to K, K and N is actually equal. You, you can write the, the um, yeah, K or, or no, J is a K, the K, but the C, for the CI, I can be one to N. Because you have a, you will eventually have a n by one, n by n times one dimension, right? So this is the the uh, the multiplication of matrix with vector, and then vector can also multiply with matrix if you transpose it. 
Once you transpose it, then it's never the, the vector is not n times one now, it's one times n, right? And that n, if uh, they match with the first dimension of the matrix, then they can be multiplied together. You just uh, you uh, you just uh, times so at the, so like here, bt is the transpose of the transpose of the b vector. Remember, all the vector we write is always vertical. If you do the transpose, then this uh, bt will become one by n. It's uh, one by n. It's a horizontal vector. You write a horizontal way, and then this horizontal vector, you you do the dot product of this line with different column, different column of n, and then it will it will it will yield a uh, it will yield a uh, it will yield another one by k, one by k vector, one by k. And then one by k times k by one, a is k by one, right? A is k by one. Then end up with the one by one. And the one by one is actually a scalar. So eventually, if you times or transpose the vector with matrix, and then add one more vector here, together, they will give a one by one. Scalar. Finally, it's a scalar. So this actually is a very useful for match, and uh, this can be used to to measure eigenvalue, eigenvalue of the matrix, or measure the measure the the force in any direction of uh, a stress field, stress field. Okay. So this uh, and M will be the stress. A and B will be the direction. So that that can be very useful to find out uh, find out the the important properties in the stress field, okay? Very good. Now, besides matrix vector multiplication, matrix and matrix can also multiply with each other, okay? So here it shows the C matrix equals to A matrix times B matrix. Here we need to follow the same principle. The second dimension of A and the first dimension of the B should be equal to each other so that they can, they can time with, with each other, okay? And then, in fact, the B, this is a matrix, you can also regard it as a combination of many, many vectors together, vertical vectors together. And then each one you do one time, each one you do one time for the uh, matrix vector multiplication. And then collectively, they will, they will give uh, another new matrix C, okay? It's the same thing. So for the, for the matrix, matrix multiplication, the algebra uh, formula is the Cij, which is uh, ij component of the c matrix that equals to aik times bkj here k and k repeat right so that means that means we for the cij we actually will take the i's row of a and all the all its uh, different uh, the, all the components around that uh, row will dot product with the, the J column in the B. And then J column of the B has K components, K numbers of components. They were dot product with each other, the dot product, okay? And then the, the eventually those results, it's like a scalar product. That results will be assigned to the column I, uh, row I, column J of the C matrix. So that's one operation. And then you, when you do all the all the columns and the rows in the A and B, then you will get a complete C matrix. Okay, so this is a very straightforward. And also the product. Oh, by the way, here are some important uh, statement. The product of two matrix. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent. Let me know if you you want me to go even quicker. If some of the material you already know, I can go even quicker. But I just want, because this is the beginning of our semester, I want to make sure all the notation, all the principle, all the mathematical mechanisms, they are very clear so that uh, you, you, will, you will get familiar with this and uh, we'll have uh, no trouble in the next, uh, next uh, lectures. You will uh, be very fluent to use those notation throughout the semester, okay? So I want to go through it carefully. But if you feel that uh, you already know that, you want me to go quicker, that's fine. That's, that's perfectly fine. Just let me know, okay? Be very, very uh, direct to, to communicate with me, okay? Very good. So here is one important statement. 
the product of two matrix A and B uh, the, will be denoted as AB, okay? So you can write AB, then people will know. This means the A and B matrix times with each other because they are in a capital form, bold. That means they are matrix, right? You can also write it in the way that uh, they are enclosed by the, the bracket. That's also fine, that's also fine, okay? Both are satisfied, both are acceptable. And then this one is defined only if the matrix are conformable, conformable. This conformable, this word means K and K, okay? So the second dimension, so here is the explanation. So that means the matrix A has a same number of colon, means the second dimension, right? Has a same number of colon as the, the number of rows of the matrix. That's the first dimension of the B, right? So when they are matching with each other, A and B, you can multiply with each other, okay? And uh, any n by, n, n by Q matrix multiplied with a Q by K matrix, it will become a N by K new matrix C. That's what we have showed you in the, we have shown in the, in the, in, the, in this formula, right? So N by Q times Q by K, then it will become N by K, yeah. And then the element, any element of C, any element, arbitrary element IJ, when you, uh, if you want to find its value, it's actually equal to AIK times BKJ. Here K is, uh, is uh, uh, the repeated, that means they are a summary. So this, this term equals to this term. Here is just a very explicit, it says it, you summarize them together, sum together. But in the, in the traditional mechanics class, whenever you see this uh, repeated, notation, you will know this actually is a, not a, only one term. It has a K terms, okay? K from one to K, okay? K terms there, summing together. And this is called a dummy index, right? Uh, dummy index. J, J and R are free index. So they are in, existing there. K is just uh, showing that uh, we, we need to do some summation here, okay? And one example, here's one example. Um, you, you can see A is a, uh, four by two matrix A, B is a two by three matrix, okay? And then when we time together, we use the row of A times the column of B. Row one times column one goes to one one position of C, which is this guy. One row, row, one, times, uh, row one times column two goes to one two position of C, which is this one, dot product, always a dot product. Row one times uh, column three goes to one three position of the C and so on. So here, eventually we get a four by three matrix. So here is a four by three matrix that is C, okay? So this is a very, very uh, ri uh, rigorous. So you can always uh, follow this format. And then for the matrix, there are also some very useful properties. We all know for any scalar, any scalar, you can, you can have an inverse, right? Any scalar, you can have inverse, like a two, you have a, you, the reverse inverse is a one over two, right? But for the matrix, it has a multiple components inside, many components inside, right? You can, you, in fact, you can also get the, uh, the inverse as long as the matrix is not equal to zero. It's not a singular matrix, okay? Just like a scalar, you, we cannot have one over zero, right? So for the matrix, how to get the inverse? The way is, uh, <clears throat> The way is, uh, the way is uh, if a matrix is invertible, means it's not a zero, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a invertible, it's a, um, then this matrix times another matrix equal to the identity matrix. We talked about this identity matrix in last class. This equals to, this, this, this can, is also a square matrix. All the diagonal elements equal to one. All of diagonal elements equal to zero, right? So it's, it, you can regard it as one in analogy to uh, in, in, the, in the scalar domain, okay? So here in the matrix, we have the, this as the identity, okay? A times B equals identity. And then if B times A also equal identity, that you are exchangeable position, then this B actually is the, the inverse of A, inverse of A, the way, to calculate this inverse, uh, the inverse of the matrix is uh, you, A, first you write A, 
you, you b equals a with the power minus one. That is the notation means that the 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 b is the inverse of a, and then a we know they they can write in this way. They can write in the in the matrix of two by two format, right? People already derived it. How to calculate the inverse, which actually equals to one over determinant of a, that is scalar, one over determinant of a, and then times a new matrix. This new matrix you actually revert, you actually um, you actually switch the switch the, the position around the diagonal and the off diagonal, and then add a minus sign in the off diagonal. So it actually is a two two a one one. See here is a one one a two two. That's original a. But here you write a two two a one one. And then for the off diagonal, you don't switch, but you add the minus sign there, minus a12, minus a21. Okay, so this is a new new matrix. And then all every element here divided by the determinant of a. Okay, so then this new matrix times original a equal to identity matrix. You can just follow, you can you can follow this uh, this uh, formula to find out the inverse. It's very straightforward. Okay. And when the the matrix is the singular, singular means that the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero. Then they, they, we cannot get the inverse. Okay, so um, always uh, always um, keep in mind that a singularity is a, a very unique condition, very unique. There are many many interesting things happening there, many interesting things here, and there are a lot of uh, mathematical challenges we need to solve to to understand the singularity better. Okay. Yeah, okay. And then for the, so here we have actually, now we talk about uh, several different types of uh, power here, right? So if we have a minus one, means this is the inverse. We have T means this is uh, the transpose, right? So those uh, transpose uh, inverse, those operations are very useful. When you here, once you get familiar with the, for, with the, with the, the transpose and inverse of a single matrix, you can also apply it to multiple matrix. If there are multiple matrix that multiply together, you can also apply it. I will show you uh, two examples in the next uh, few slides, and then you will know how to derive that. And then once you derive that, you can use that in the future calculations. It's, a, it's a very, very useful. So <clears throat> in, terms of, uh, in terms of the matrix multiplication, there are some rules we need to follow. Can you guys see me? Yes, okay, very good, very good. So there are some rules to follow. I didn't change to a laser, laser point because I think if you need, you, you need me to explain things, I can quickly switch to the, to the chalk, to the chalk, and I can draw here if you need, okay? I can draw the complicated, complicated mathematical operation here. So let me know if you want me to draw. I can I can draw in different color so that uh, you can understand better. Okay. So all those options are available. It's just like we are. It's the same as we're sitting in the classroom. So we can do all these uh, explanations. Yeah. Okay. So for the for the matrix multiplication, there are there are uh, important rules we can use. First rule is called associative rule. That means if we have three matrix multiplied together. A times B times C matrix. We can actually multiply A and B first and then multiply with C. Or we can multiply B and C first and then multiply with A. We don't change the sequence. We just change the time, time uh, uh, change the time that we, uh, when, we, which one we calculate first. Final results is the same. Final results is the same. So it doesn't matter. Okay, so you can, you can, and it depends on your preference, you can do that. Another one is called distributive rule. If we have A times B plus C, we can actually multiply them separately. We can, we can have A times B plus A times C. That's also fine, okay? Third one is the non-commutative rule. A times B, if it's a matrix, A times B is not necessarily equal to B times A, sometimes equal. They're all equal to the identity matrix sometimes, but not always. And also when you do this uh, uh, commutation, commuta uh, commutation, you actually need to make sure that uh, the, the dimension between them are matching with each other. If you, they are not matching, they actually are not allowed to 
multiply with each other. Okay. And also, and also this, uh, this A and B, this, uh, um, this uh, multiplication, in many cases, uh, many cases, they do not, do not, they are not valid. They can, they are not equal to each other. Okay. Uh, uh, next, the two, um, two important rules are regarding to transpose and inverse. If you transpose, to uh, transpose the multiplication of two matrix, then the results actually equals to the multiplication of transpose in the in the reversed order. So A and B multiply together, and then take the transpose. It actually equals to B transpose times A transpose. Okay, they will reverse the order. If you have A B C three multiply together, and then take the transpose final results actually equal to C transpose, B transpose times A transpose, okay? Same thing happened to the inverse. If we have A and B inverse, it equals to B inverse times A inverse. Remember that for the matrix, the, the, the direction, consequent uh, direction is very important. You, you A inverse times B inverse, it's not, uh, it's not equal to A inverse times B inverse, it's not equal. Okay, so this is the very this is the un, really unique. It's not like a scalar. Scalar multiply, you can change the sequence, but the matrix, you cannot. And then A, B, C, together, multiply together, take the inverse equal to C inverse times B inverse times A inverse. Okay, so those are very useful, very useful um, way, very useful ways to calculate the matrix uh, operations. Here, I will give one, two examples. First example is this uh, inverse example, okay? How to prove that uh, A times B take the inverse equal to B inverse times the uh, A inverse. How to prove that? How do we know this is true, okay? Once you, you prove this, you can practice it. You can do the same thing for the A and A times B transpose that equal to B transpose times A transpose. You can practice it, okay? Second example is more complicated. Is uh, A transpose, then you take inverse. This value actually people find it equals to A inverse and then take the A transpose. So these two actually can switch with each other. These two, two different operations, okay? So, so all those are very uh, mathematical proven, very interesting. So here I want to just demonstrate to you how to do that, okay? How to prove that, yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes, okay, very good, very good. Am I talking too slow? Is this too slow? No? Okay, okay, good, good. I'm glad, I'm glad, very good. Yeah, let me know if the uh, uh, class is too slow or, or class is too fast, okay? We can always adjust uh, the speed according to your, to your uh, preference. So, because our goal is to make sure all of you have a greater learning experience, greater learning experience, and you indeed learn something very useful for your future, okay? So be, be uh, very directed to tell me how to adjust, how how to adjust the class style to enhance your learning experience, okay? Just to be a director to tell me, yeah. Good, good. So let's prove the first one first. Now, the way to prove is, <clears throat> let's look at the left-hand side. AB inverse, right? AB inverse. AB inverse means if this guy, if it times the non-inverse one, which is AB itself, if it times with it, it will equal to identity matrix I, right? It tells us this. If this is the case, if this is the case, we can multiply other matrix from the, from the right-hand side on both terms. We can multiply something here, multiply something here. As long as the value is the same value, then we same matrix, we multiply, then the both sides are still equal. The way to multiply is uh, we multiply B inverse and A inverse on the left-hand side. And then also do the same thing on the right-hand side. That, then in the left-hand side, you will have a B minus one close to B, right? And then according to our associative rule, associative rule, you can do any one first. You can do any one first, okay? As long as you follow the, follow the sequence from the left to right, but the, within the multiplication of multiple matrix, 
you can select anyone to do the calculation, do the multiple multiplication first. That's fine. So in this case, we do this one first. We do B and B inverse first. And then this gives what? Gives I, identity matrix. Identity matrix times any matrix equals to that matrix. Won't change anything. So then this B times B inverse disappeared. Then what are left over is A and A inverse. Then again, it also becomes I, becomes the, the, the identity matrix. They all disappeared, this one. Then all we left is the AB inverse. And on the right hand side, we already we, we have the, the term we multiplied, which is the B inverse, A inverse, right? So that proves these two two turn two two terms equal to each other, each other. Okay. Very good, very good. So that's the first proof. Second proof, this one, that's more interesting. That's more interesting. That tells us transpose and inverse can switch with each other. Can switch. And in fact, if you have more, like here, oops. Oops. If you have more, can you see my shared screen? Can you guys share, see my shared screen? Yeah, yes. yeah. If you if you look at this, if you look at this, you can actually have more. You can have more. Okay. They can be switched. They can be switched. You just regard AT, A inverse as a new tensor, as a new matrix. They can add more there, okay? So most of them, they can switch. So this is a very, very useful, very useful uh, mathematical uh, conclusions. Now, <clears throat> now, how to prove this guy? The way, the way to prove is, uh, first look at the left-hand side. This is the easier to operate because it has the minus, the inverse at the outside. When you have the inverse, you can always multiply with the uh, with the, the inverse again, and then you get it to the 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 identity matrix. So left hand side, we can left hand side we can multiply with the a transpose right left hand side. Then it's the a transpose inverse times a transpose. This will give you identity i right. This identity i. This i can be further expanded as uh, A times A inverse, can be expanded like this way, right? Can be expanded this way. Now, this way, this, this way also gives I. And I, identity, identity matrix, if you take the inverse of this identity matrix, is still identity matrix. Because it, it, when you transpose it, the zero of, of diagonal components will, will still be zero, okay? You won't change the diagonal. So still, still, uh, still it, it is still i, okay. And this term, this term means if we put a and a minus one inside, that's i times t. It's the same thing, same thing as i as it, okay. And then remember this one we mentioned it before. You have a t here. This actually, actually will become t. This one become a inverse t times at. We already know that, right? It become A inverse T times AT in the previous slides. Like we already know, learned that. Then look at this side and this side, you, it's the two matrix times the same thing, AT, all times AT. They are equal to each other always. If two matrix always times with the same thing and they equal to each other, that, that two matrix are equal to each other, right? So then it means that A inverse T equals to A T inverse. So that's how we prove it. This is true, right? So that uh, those uh, right now, you, 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 once we prove it, you can directly use that. We don't need to prove that in, in the homework or in the, in the exam, don't need it. You just use it, okay? Okay, so when we know, once we know what's the, what's the operation rules we should follow for the matrix and the vectors, then we can start to use them to, uh, to calculate, to calculate you know, different equations because the different equations can be represented by the matrix and the vectors uh, formulas, okay? So let's see, if in, in, in case we have uh, n unknowns, in, in, uh, n unknowns, 
that is x1 to xn. Those are all unknowns. We don't know what are they. And then we have n equation. We have n equation. So n unknown, n equation, then we can actually solve unique solution, right? We can solve the unique solution. In this case, the unique solution, uh, as, uh, as long as uh, the, all the equations are independent, so they cannot, uh, um, they cannot, uh, they are not equal to each other. Equation are not equal to each other, okay? Then they are independent. And then we will have a unique solution. In this case, the, the, those n equations can be written in the way of a11. Here, all the small character a are constant value, just a parameter. And then b, they are also uh, constant values. Only x is not constant. They are unknown value to be solved, okay? So we will have a11, x1, plus a12, x2, plus all the way to a1n, xn. That equals to b1. So put all the, the parameters that's a, that, that are not associated with the unknowns on the right-hand side. All the, all the terms that associate with the unknowns in the left, at the left-hand side, okay? So then we have this, this equation. And then second equation is a21, x1, plus a22, x2, plus all the way up to a2n, xn equals b2, okay? So this one, two, three, actually they, they denote, denote which, which equation, those, uh, uh, what's the value, what's the parameter value in each equation, okay? So there's a generic expression. And then we can do, we can get list all the n equations. Once we list them, we actually can, we can, we can summarize that in a brief way using matrix and vectors. So we take all the, we align all the, all the uh, equations in a way that uh, unknown always start from x1 up to xn. And then all the, all the non um, unknown associated terms are on the right hand side of the equation. We, uh, we can arrange it in this way. Once we arrange it this way, we can extract all the, compo all the constant components, constant parameters in front of unknowns, make them into a matrix, make them into a matrix. So say here, A11, A12, up to A1n, right? All the com constant components are here. And then all the unknowns, we can write in a list of, in a list of vertical, vertical vector, vertical column, right? X1 to Xn. All the, all the, the constant parameters on the right-hand side, we can also write them in, into a vertical column. Then in this way, you can actually multiply now. You can multiply A matrix times X. X will be here, right? A row here. That equals to B. So remember, in this way, actually, when you calculate it, you have, uh, we will have uh, this row times this column equals to this value. So that's the actual one equation. That's this equation. Can you see my joining? Can you guys see my joining? Yes, okay, very good. So that's one equation. And then another one, again, times x equals b2. This gives us this one, okay? And then same thing for, for everyone, this one, times this one, equal to this one, eventually give this one, same thing, okay? So that's how, how you can um, uh, summarize many, many equations into the matrix form, which is this form, which is, uh, yeah, which is this form, which is this form, okay? So bold matrix dot product, bold vector equals a bold vector, okay? So, this is a very useful method. Now it's uh, 140. Let's stop here and we will continue in next lecture. Very good, very good.